Hey, welcome back. In this tutorial, we'll be looking at for loops and different variations of them and how you can use them to iterate over collections. So let's use this function to demonstrate the different types of for loops that we can use. So we have an input array of type string called names. So if we wanted to iterate over that array and get each string from that array, so we could say for name in names, and then we'll add our block body here. Then we want to print that name out. So we could then use name. So in this version, we're providing the name of each individual element in the collection. The in keyword tells us that we're going to iterate over the name of the collection passed in next. In this case, that collection is that input array of type string. That then ensures that name is of type string. And so in this case, we can print out that name directly. Now we could also do this without the body and we could refactor this so that it was all on a single line, just like this. Now, what if we wanted to iterate over this collection, but we wanted to use an index instead? Well, we could also do that. So in this case, we could say for, and we could say index colon int. This is indicating that the each specific value will be called index, but it will have type int. In the other version, it was string. Then we can once again we'll say in. This time we'll say names dot indices. And if we look at this, we'll see that indices will return an int range. Int range is a class within Kotlin that allows us to iterate over a collection or a range of values. So once again, we can then add our block here. And now we actually have access to each individual index. So we could still print out each individual value by saying names and then using that index to look up the value. We could also print out each individual index if we wanted. In this iteration, it allows us to have access to both that index and the value. Now maybe we want to have access to both the index and the value directly without having to do any manual indexing. Well, we can do that as well. We can say for, in this case, we'll add another set of parentheses and we'll say index comma value in names dot with index. With index is a function that will essentially return back each of that index and value to us. So now once again, we could print these values out and we could say, print line the value at index is value. So this is a nice convenience that allows us to have access to both that index and value over the course of that iteration. We could also do this in a more functional fluent manner. So instead of writing a for loop specifically, we could use some of the built-in functional operators that Kotlin provides. So we could say names dot for each. And if we look at what it's auto-completed, we'll see that there is a for each and then two different for each indexed functions. So if we use for each, we'll see that it then takes in a function that takes a string as a parameter and returns a unit. So this is the lambda that we can pass in that we will use to act on each of these iterated values. So if we select this, we could now use our print statement and we could print the value of each string just like this. If we wanted to use for each index, we could do that as well. And once we have that function defined, once again, we could print out both of those values. So 
So this is a very convenient way to very fluently and in a functional fashion get access to both the index and the value. Now let's look at how we could iterate over a simple range of values. So let's imagine we want to print out the numbers from 0 to 10. Well, we could do that by saying 4, and then we'll say index in 0 dot dot 10. This is a shorthand for defining an int range from 0 to 10. And then as we iterate over that, we could simply print out that value. And just like that, we've now iterated over that value. Now there's some more interesting things you can do with int ranges, and we'll take a look at that in another tutorial. If you want to learn more about the different types of for loops and about what requirements there are to be able to iterate over a collection, you can check out the documentation. The documentation provides examples of each of these different types of loops, as well as giving some in-depth analysis of what requirements they are. Specifically, the fact that to iterate over a collection using these loops that we've seen, it has to provide an iterator and have has next or next functions. So that's been an overview of different types of for loops in Kotlin and how you can use them to iterate over collections or range of values.